Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today we're going to talk about how to uh, punch down or wire a Category 6 uh, jack. And um, I have some uh, tools here. We're not going to, we we're a little redundant here on the tools, so let's start, okay? And the first thing I want to show you is, obviously, if you're a professional, uh, you want a punch down tool like this. This is top quality professional tool from Fluke. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it there. It says Fluke. And I want to talk a little bit about this and then we're going to talk about this uh, scissor and how to use it and everything else. And then if you're not a professional, you're just going to do one or two jacks. Well, this is all you need. And you know, a lot of people say, well, I got to know color code and I got to know this and I got to know that. No, you don't. You do not need to know color code. Um, now, if you want to learn it, that's great. And if you're a professional, maybe you should know it. But today, we will not be talking about color code, but we will be installing this jack um, with this cable, and you can see how it works. So let's start out with the professional tools first. And here they are, professional tools. This is called a punch down tool, and it's fluke. It's what you would use if you're a professional cabler. Um, it really has some nice features. First, it has this removable blade. And I want to see if uh, you can actually see that blade with the, the little edge there. It has a cutting edge. And then if you turn it, it snaps out. And then you have one it doesn't cut. And there's no cutting on it at all. But this is a 110 blade used for 110 termination. And of course, the way we use it, today is this way because we're going to have to cut. Now, neat thing about this, besides the fact that it has that little ridge there that cuts the cable off, trims it off at the proper length, nice thing about this is it also says right there, cut. I should put it this way. It says cut. You can just barely see it. But it also says cut here. And the nice thing about these punch down tools is you can't put this stuff in backwards. You can only put it in one way. You see? It's kind of cool. So no matter how you put it in, the cutting end right here is always going to be on the cutting side. And you can actually see it when you decide to punch down, punching down things. So uh, another uh, thing it has here is it has a high impact and a low impact uh, choice here. And of course there's nothing in between. It's either high or low. And you pick which one you want. And what it means by impact is if you notice when you push on this, ah, I can't push hard enough. Um, it, it, once you get it to a certain point it will snap and bounce out and that cuts the cable and make sure that it's in. That's why it's called punching down. And of course here, um, the low there's a little thing, I don't, I don't think you can see it in the video, but there's a little mark there that says low or high. Of course, if you push it one way or the other, you'll know it's low or high. Now, you also have a little uh, wheel here. Nice thing about this little wheel is you turn it upside down, and then gravity drops out the other blade. Now, you got to order these blades when you need them, okay, so they don't come, you know, with them. you got to order the case and the blade, and if you need both blades, then you order a case, blade, and the other blade. So this is a 110 blade, and today this is mostly used for computer networks, things like that, for uh, uh, patch panels, jacks, all sorts of terminations that need to be done. Usually today it's 110. However, you also have a 66 block blade, and there you can see it says 66. If I can get it just right, take my word for it, it says 66, not 99, as one person said he had a 99 blade. Um, in this case, you also have one that cuts. You can see the, the, the cutting portion right there that cuts. It's used for a 66 block. And of course here, is this a push down? It doesn't cut the wire, just pushes it into the, uh, to the uh, blade of the 66 block. Mostly you use this, the cutting side. And again, it does the same thing here. So, you know, you can only put it in one way, and lo and behold, that's where your cutting blade is, right where it says cut. 
So we're going to put this back in here, and you're going to see it's going to hop right in there. You see, I just turn this so it's spring level, I'll let it go, and it won't come out. And then, of course, I'm going to put my 110 blade back in there. And it's all ready to go. Now, next thing I want to talk about, a tool that you need, is one of these. If you're a professional, you need this tool. This is a professional lineman scissor used for uh, cutting wire, used for a bunch of other things. Um, it's hardened steel, it's very sharp, it also has these little cool notches they used to use a lot years ago when it was time to strip a cable. You put it in there and you pull the cable out and it would strip. Now a lot of people think you use scissors like this. That's how you use your office scissors or your scissors at home. However, this is a Lyman scissor. It's not used like that at all. What you do is you put your hand in there like that and you put your thumb here on this little, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's, there's knurling there, and that's where you put your thumb, and, and that's how it works. It works like this. And it's kind of cool. I don't use this very much. Used two years ago, but I don't do a lot of work these days. I'm getting too old. Um, but this is a professional lineman scissor, so if you see a cable guy using it, don't laugh at him. Uh, they've been using this for 50 years, and it works a lot better than wire cutters. But if you like wire cutters, use wire cutters. Who cares? But uh, this is a platinum tool. Uh, it's an excellent one. It works great. We have them on the website. And uh, yes, uh, that's how you, you do it. That's how you hold it. You hold it just like that. And it's nice it has big area here because when you're really pushing down hard, you need that on your hand. And uh, 25 pair cable goes through that. I've actually seen a guy cut a penny with these scissors, and they can do that. It's very heavy. It's not a you know, flimsy thing like this made out of aluminum and with blades that fall apart. And sometimes I have a hard time cutting paper with those. This thing will cut through just about anything. But these are the tools if you're a professional. And that's what you need for today, to punch down a jack and to strip the cable. So we're going to move these to the side. And we're going to talk about what you need if you're a homeowner and uh, at the same time, you're only doing one or two jacks in your whole life. You don't need, you know, these tools that are made for professionals. What you need is you just get a scissors, and some people have wire cutters, that's fine. Um, or one of these things, this also strips cable. I don't use this stripping cable part. But you can, it has a little blade in there, it will strip a cable. But more importantly, what you need this for is a 110 punch down. This is a 110 punch down. It does not cut though. We're going to demonstrate how this works. Again, if you're putting a jack in your house and you're only going to put in one or two or maybe ten in your whole lifetime, why buy this? Just get this. Works this as good. Get scissors out of the kitchen drawer. That's all you'll need. So let, let me show you what we're going to do. And today we're dealing with category six. Now there's there's really two active categories today, and some people might argue for three, uh, but it's 5E, category 5E, and the E stands for enhanced, and um, category 6. And um, of course, there's also 6A, augmented, and then you get up into 7 and 8 and stuff like that, but they're really not used that much today. It's usually 5E or 6. Now, this is a category 6 cable. The difference between a Category 5 and a Category 6 is there's more twists in the Category 6 than there is in the Category 5. And because of those twists, what happens is, is you lift up a box of a thousand foot of these, this cable and it's heavier. It weighs more because it has more copper in it than the Cat 5. You know, you twist things, you can get more in there, you know, when you're twisting, so there's more copper in, in Category 6. It also can ha handle higher speeds. Um, up to a gigabit uh, um, uh, bandwidth, and um, but you know you can also do lower speeds. I mean, you can put telephones on Cat 5e and Cat 6, and it works absolutely fine. Uh, there for a while, we were using Category 3 for computers. Maybe that was about 15 years ago, and then they got so inexpensive that you'd use it for telephones also. And you can still get Cat uh, Cat 3. I can't seem to get Cat 5, but you can get Cat 3. 
But what I found out is the price for Cat 3 is about the same price as Cat 5e. And since, you know, you got technicians that are in a truck and they got to carry what? Plenum and, and PVC Cat 5e, uh, Plenum PVC Cat 6, they got to carry Plenum PVC Cat 3. If they're going to go out on the job, you got six cables. So we don't do that anymore. We don't deal with Cat 3 anymore. We just use 5e. It's not that expensive. Um, for telephone work and uh, for computer work though you want 5e or, or category 6. When to use uh, category 5 or category, I'm sorry, 5e or category 6 um, is um, depending on, in my opinion, on how long you're going to be in that building. Uh, why pay for a cable you're not really going to use a lot. So if you're going to be in the building for, um, you know, let's say 10 years or something, or you own the building, you know, cable at Cat 6. It's not that much more expensive than 5e. And, um, you know, do everything. Now, some people say, well, what happens if I cable at Cat 6 and I use Cat 5e jacks and Cat 5e patch panel? You know, that's fine. You're not going to hurt anything. It still works. Um, but in reality, officially, that's not a Cat 6 install. That's a Cat 5e install because it always reverts to the lowest level um, of, the, uh, of the part that's within the system. So in this case, it's going to be Cat 5, uh, Cat 6. We're going to use Cat 6. We're going to use Cat 6 jack and uh, uh, Cat 6 cable. Of course, this is a sample, obviously. No one has a real cable that's behind the wall that's that short. Eh, you know, you never know. Maybe they do. Anyway, a lot of people say, well, don't I need the, um, the color code? And if you like the color code, it's right there. I don't know why you would need it. But that's the color code. I don't need it. I don't need it because it's printed right here. And if you see, I'll take out my special magical pointing device. If you see, there's an A and a B. Now, that stands for two different types of color codes that can be used on the same jack. Again, on this side, A and B. Now, um, it, it's a, a 568 is a full name, A, or 568B. Now, that's, you can do A or B. The general uh, philosophy is that most people, just by habit, go with B. However, if you put your jack and you punch it down with B, but then you go to your patch panel, usually in the back room with the mops, um, if you do, <laughs> yeah, I hate to see some of those data rooms and people complain about it their system going up and down and you find a wet mop on a 66 block. Hmm. Anyway, um, you want to cable, if you're going to cable at the jack in A, then your patch panel needs to be cabled with the A pattern of color code. If you're going to do B, which is generally 99% of the installs are B, um, maybe 90% of the installs are B, then the patch panel needs to be B. If you put the jacket A and the patch panel at B, what you have is you have a crossover cable, which really doesn't work. Um, when you plug that patch panel into a switch and then you plug the jack side of it into a computer, it doesn't work because it's a crossover. The only time you use crossover cable is in like devices, computer to computer, switch to switch router to router and when you're going from switch to computer you straight through so we're going to go with the b pattern today and if i had this other end attached to a patch panel i would have to pat, uh, punch this down with a b pattern but please remember it's just not as complicated as it sounds it, it really does get easy you do one you got it down for life um, I, I like the fact that on the jacket it actually says category 6. And um, inside you're going to have eight conductors, uh, which is going to take an eight conductor um, mod plug, um, eight position, eight conductor mod plug, which is generally 99.9999% of the time is used for computers. Um, there used to be a really old phone system put out by AT&T. They used RJ45s to run their um, old phones, Merlin phones, I think they're called. Probably some of you still have it. 
Um, but no other phone system uses, that I know of anyway, that uses an RJ45. So nowadays, this is this used for computers and um, for Ethernet networks. Um, some other minor applications like T1s, things like that, sometimes you use an RJ45. Anyway, I, dig, I digress. Let's get back to the situation. So I want to show you how we're going to cut the cable. So the first thing you want to do is you just want to score the cable. Give yourself some room too. You notice I have some room here? Give yourself some room. And when you pull this through the wall and you have the cable sticking out, you should have about that much space. Yeah, I don't know. I can't do it on the computer. But about three foot from the wall. Don't worry about wasting a couple foot of cable. Most expensive cable in the world is that which is too short. And what you have here, not all Cat6 has this, but in this particular brand, you have that little separator that separates the pairs. And it also turns as it goes through the rest of the cable. Notice each of these cables are twisted, and that's why it's called UTP, unshielded twisted pair. And you have this little device in here. It doesn't pull out. You can pull all you want. It isn't going to go anywhere. But you just need to cut it off. It's no longer, once you cut the, the, the exterior, there is no um, problems with cutting that off. So you cut it off. So the next thing you want to do is you want to notch a little bit here. So you notch this a little bit. See the notch? A notch there. Take one of the cables. You pull it down a little bit more. Okay, now the reason I do that is right here when I was using to cut the outer shell, there's a good chance I may have nicked some of these cables. And sometimes you can see it. And that will give you trouble when it's time to punch down. You know, it's, it's like, gosh, I punched it down and the cable fell off. Yeah, well, that's because you nicked it. And so you don't want to go anywhere near where you use the, the thing to get the shielding off, you know, to get this off. Not the shielding, but the, the outside container. And you just pull this down a little bit. You're not hurting anything by doing it. And then you just cut off the excess. And you don't need this, so we're going to cut this off. The separator separates these cables to the exact si uh, size they need to be because of their electrical characteristics. Remember, when you run two wires uh, parallel, uh, if you have power in one that fluctuates up and down, it's going to transmit to the other one uh, power, which in this case produces static. Um, there's two, uh, there's another device I want to show you too before we go any further. They're, they're called pucks. Uh, we have two pucks here, two, two different designs. It's just a matter of preference or whatever you like. Um, one's from Platinum Tools. I'm really fond of Platinum Tools. Uh, but first let's look at this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it out. And on this it's kind of neat because it's made for all different types of uh, jacks. So there's some jacks that rather than have the termination here, they actually have it punched down on top. So this is rotated to the top and that's when you need that one. And it snaps in place. I don't want to snap it because that's a, you know, I got to get a screwdriver to unsnap it. And then there's others that, that snap into here that just go in there like that. So it just sits nice and nice and firm. The nice thing about this is then you can punch down um, the cable goes through here, you know, like this, holds it in place. Then you can punch down and it's easier on your hand. It's really hard when you're trying to punch down a jack right on top of um, a carpet. The carpet gives too much, it moves back and forth, and you definitely don't want to do it on a wall. I've seen a lot of technicians that get a bunch of cardboard and they put it all together and they, they tape it all together and they make themselves their own puck. Uh, and it, you know, but these things are so inexpensive and they do so many other things, it's kind of cool. So that's one style. The other style, which I like also, is from Platinum Tools. And um, the nice thing about this is it really takes any one you put in also. It can go any of those, you know, and, it, and punch down. It's, it's sturdy. It's, it's rubber, very hard rubber. It, um, you know, you can bend it and all. And the nice thing about bending it here, this is a little trick, 
is that when you pull cables, sometimes they get stuck and you can stick them right in there and you can bend it and it grips. And man, does that grip the cable. It's really hard. Uh, so it's a good gripper. Again, these two uh, pucks really save your arms and I mean, your hands and, and your customers' walls or floors or whatever, and they're not that expensive. And yeah, if you want, just use a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood, that's fine. But these work better. And they, they have a design that actually fits. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to do B uh, punch down. So we're going to move to the punch down. And we're going to do B. And um, the colors there, as you can see, that's, that's going to be brown, white, brown, green, white, green. And over here, it's going to be orange, white, and orange. And you notice the colors on top change. Well, that's the A pattern. We're going with the B pattern. Let me see if I can help you there. So we're going to go with the B pattern. That's the A pattern. So we're going to follow this half of the color code. It's almost as if there's a line drawn there, but there isn't. You're going to have to interpret it. So we're going to put the cables into these little 110 slots here. And then we're going to use the punch down tools. I'm going to use both punch down tools, professional one and the handyman one. And uh, they both work fine. They'll work for you. Um, but anyway, let's do it. So one of the, the things that you can do, uh, because some of these cables, and if you notice, some are real tight, others are a little loose, so they're, they're set at different frequencies of twists, and that's so that you don't get that bleed over. And there's a whole reason why, I actually went to school to learn all that in the Marine Corps, but it's too long now, it doesn't really matter why you do twisting of cable and what actually happens. A lot to do with radio wave antenna propagation and stuff like that. Anyway, sometimes it's hard to get them separate, but if you see what I'm doing, this works really well. This gets you right through it, and that's what you do. You just untwist them. The green one is the hard one. Even the start, sometimes it's hard. Stick it in there, you turn it. Now, if I was installing these jacks as a profession at my customer's location, I hope by now I would have had like four jacks done. But because we're doing a demo, it goes a lot slower. But I don't think we can go any slower than this without causing you to fall asleep. But sometimes you got to learn, and learning is more important than speed. Okay, so we got them all separated here, which you can speed up. Got them all separated. And remember, you always deal with pairs. You don't necessarily talk about conductors. Sometimes you do, but usually in telecom, you're, you're dealing with uh, pairs, pairs of cables. So this is a four pair cable, it's pretty standard. So we're gonna start on this side with the orange. And what you wanna do is you wanna place this cable right at the end, the opening, right here at the end and you want to do orange. And the first orange is going to be orange white. So we're going to push that down here. Okay, and then you're going to push it here. Uh, keep your twist as tight as you can up to the edge. I didn't quite do that, so let's go back and twist it again. I took too much twist off. That much to change is not going to make a difference. And then I'm going to do the other side, and that's going to be brown. So let's do brown. Okay. So I'm going to push it right in there and pull it. Now, as I said in my other recent videos, when I talk about cabling jacks, um, you know, I often joke about not teaching an old dog new tricks, and I do consider myself a little older than the average cable guy. But my son uh, taught me a new trick, and that is you take these and you tie them up here and you twist them. Because sometimes just placing them there in the slots, they fall out on you. And if you notice something, it's really cool here. I'm glad we have a, a demonstration here. Remember I talked about nicking an end? You see that? See where it's nicked? It's 
connect right there, and it's, it's still attached, but I keep on wiggling it back, it's going to fall off. So that's why you strip back the extra cable, not using your strippers. You just strip it back, and that's going to save that rest of that cable. So you're going to cut off this excess anyway, so it's no big deal. So we're going to put this here, and then we're going to put it here. And you can see how that's just about ready to fall off. And then, of course, your last pair here. You see how easy this? I didn't talk to you about color code. You don't need it for this application, right? And then we're going to pull both of these down. And it's just barely holding on that one. And we're going to twist them. Again, this is a new trick for me, and it really works well, because I don't know how many times I push that cable in place, and I just move the thing, and all the cables come out. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to punch them down, and I'm going to use a professional one first, okay? And I'm going to show you how this works, and we'll use the handyman one. And the first thing you do is you hear that snap. That's why it's called punch down. And I usually do it more than once like this, and that causes, if I did it right, I didn't push right on it, it's on an angle, cuts the cable. See the cable cut? And then, and of course, as I'm doing this, you want to test every single jack you put in. Some companies only test one in five. I kind of think that if you don't test every one, the ones you don't test won't work. And you know, what does it cost for a go back? You know, your reputation, everything else. So just test them all. Just get a pinout tester at this point. These cables are so reliable. The quality is so good on jacks and cables that we sell anyway, that just a pinout, just make sure you pin it out right, is going to save you. And if you test on every single one, then, um, you know, if you do a pinout test on every single one, that's the minimum. If you do that, you're not going to have any go-backs. Uh, but anyway, I'll let you see this, how I'm going to punch down on this. It's going to hear that snap. And as you can see, it's just about ready to fall off there. So we're going to do this one. And you wiggle them, and they come off. If I did it twice, it would just fall off. Um, and now we're going to use the handyman one. That's what I call it, the handyman one, which is great. You only do one or two jacks, use this. Why waste your money on buying a top-of-the-end professional punch-down tool that you're only going to use two times? Anyway, remember it has that 110 type blade there. So we're going to take it and we're just going to push it down. And pushed it in. And pushed it in for the other one. I'll let you see this one. Pushes it in, you see it? Some people have actually used things like credit cards, but credit cards are thicker. And when you push it down, and uh, the wire will go down, sure enough, but that little thing in there, when you're pushing the wire down, it's supposed to hold the wire. You use a credit card, it's too thick, and it really spreads those apart. You can use it if you want, but it's kind of a waste. And of course, we're going to use our scissors, and we're just going to cut off the ends, if I can. I like this little way to keep it arranged right. So again, this doesn't cut uh, like this one does. This has that cutting blade. This one doesn't cut, it just pushes it in. So it's all pushed in. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to trim it as close as I possibly can. It's not as clean, as you can see, as the other cut, but it works, so who cares, right? It looks good, and it works, and that's fine. So we're going to trim here. Okay, and it comes with a cap. A lot of times you don't need to put the cap on, but it comes with it. Why not use it? So you just put it in here. 
and you squeeze down and you can almost tell the unprofessional ones are going to hold it out a little bit but there you go it's in there and then you have all this scrap pieces that some people get upset that you're throwing them out well you can recycle them if you want it's up to you we recycle a lot of old cable or cable is too short to run for the next one I just throw it in trash okay now these things are called keystone jacks uh, they're square like this everything else this is a keystone faceplate and these faceplates come in one port they actually come in two ports I'm not showing you right now and six ports um, and four ports so I'm just showing you a couple of them here but these are standardized holes this is a standardized jack so Eddie, mm, I would say everybody is producing these jacks that are exactly the same size. And what you do is you look here, and it says up on it. I don't know if you can see that. There it is. So they do have an up and a down, and you want to put that on the wall uh, facing up. And then what you want to do is it has the jacks all have that little notch at the end and they have this push down indent on it so what you do is you push it down and then you snap it in and it looks kind of cool looks good most of the jacks we sell by the way uh, are blue and most of the cable we sell is blue for some odd reason in the industry people like blue and uh, for computers and they usually like white for RJ11s which is your Jack use on your telephones, um, non voice over IP telephones. But I'll show you one other trick too. And um, the trick is here I got an RJ11 plug, and this is truly an RJ11. It just has one pair in there. You can see it, even though it has six positions, there's only one pair of wire in there, and there's two conductors right there. And uh, so they, they, they cable everything in the office for um, computers. But then they have some devices like fax machines, things like that. So rather than change this out as an RJ11, they just use an RJ45 jack with an RJ11 plug. And it actually works absolutely fine. You just have to know that the two center pins uh, are the pins that at the patch panel, you have to use one of these to connect to you know, your incoming dial tone line for that jack, for that fax machine. And it comes out, goes in pretty easily. You can't do that the other way. You can't use a RJ45 mod plug. This is an RJ45 mod plug that actually goes in here for computers. You can't do that on an RJ11 jack. Sometimes you don't have that hole in the wall. You have to edit there. Sometimes you don't have that hole in the wall. So what you do is you just buy a surface jack, and it's the same thing. It's a it's a um, um, keystone jack fits right in there and this snaps off this, this thing snaps off and you attach it you know right up against the wall never face it up always face it sideways or down to keep the dust out of there and um, that's how you you do it and you can run the cable along the baseboard or something like that or if you're in a um, data room you just put this up against your you know wherever you want it and then you can plug in your jack so we do have surface mount jacks and we do have uh, one, two, four, and six surface mounts um, uh, modules. At any rate, thank you for watching the video. Again, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com. Um, please uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on YouTube. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet. <laughs>